call this meeting to order. Welcome everyone to the Committee of Adjustment meeting of October 1st, 2019. My name is Ron Chatta, committee chair for today's meeting. This is a meeting of Committee of Adjustment. The Committee of Adjustment is composed of five citizen members who are appointed by the Brampton City Council. The committee is authorized by the Ontario Planning Act to consider applications for minor variance from the provision of the City of Brampton zoning bylaw. The committee also considered applications for consent, sometimes referred to as land division applications, which includes severing a new lot from an existing lot, a lot addition easement mortgages or, ex uh, mortgages or leases in excess of 21 years. I would like to introduce uh, committee members to my immediate left member, Desiree Drossler, to my far left member, Rod Power, to my immediate right member, Dave Cope, and my name is Ron Chatta, committee chair. Uh, member Anna Christina Marcus is absent from today's meeting and she has sent her regrets. Seated at the table in front of the committee is Ms. Jeannie Meyer, secretary treasurer of the Committee of Adjustment. And seated near the podium, we have city staff members who will assist the committee today. Staff, could you please uh, introduce yourself? Turn on the mic, please, before you speak. Bindu Shah, development planner. Thank you. I'm Shelby Swinfield, development planner. Carolyn Crozier, manager of development. I'm Elizabeth Corazola, manager of zoning and sign bylaw services. Thank you. Before we consider today's application, the committee has some procedural matters to take care of. The first is adoptions of the minute. Uh, the minutes uh, of the meeting held September 10, 2019 has been presented in today's agenda. Committee members, any question, comment, concern about those minutes? Seeing none, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to approve those minutes by Mr. Power, seconded by Mr. Cope, all in favor? The next item we have is declaration of interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. Uh, does any member have any declaration of pecuniary interest to declare any, any matter being discussed today? Seeing none, now we move on to withdrawals and deferrals. Uh, we don't have any written request by uh, any, anybody for any application today, I believe. Uh, to all the applicants, agents, or the homeowners, uh, anyone sitting in the audience wishes to speak any deferral or, uh, or uh, withdrawal, any matter being discussed today? Seeing none. Through the chair, um, we do have a staff recommendation report for deferral on applications for 1553 Hallstone Road. I noticed that, uh, Ms. Myers, uh, I thought uh, since no one is coming forward and it's a staff recommendation, maybe we should just look uh, when the item number comes. That's what my understanding was. I did notice that. Unless uh, you want me to or you want us to uh, look that application now. Um, through the chair, you may want to acknowledge that staff have, are recommending a deferral and inquire if the homeowner or the applicant is in the audience to speak to the application. Sure, what application was that? Through the chair, that would be B19026 and A19166 for the property okay. at 1553 yeah. Hallstone Road. So anybody from 1553 Hallstone Road? So you, you wanna come, you wanna step forward please? So you have two, uh, one is a consent application, application B19026 and A19166. Your name and address for the record, please. It's uh, David Rollins, 1553 Hallstrom Road. So you are the property owner? Yes. Okay. Uh, you know our staff is uh, recommending uh, a deferral no later than last committee meeting of 2019. You understand and accept all that? Have you got a date yet or just still pending? Uh, we do have date uh, according to the calendar. Uh, whatever the last committee, I, I believe there's one hearing in December, but 
Ms. Myers can confirm for that one. For the chair, there is only the one hearing date in December, which is, uh, I think staff are suggesting that the application be heard no later than that particular date, which is December 3rd. December? December 3rd. 3rd, right? Okay, so we have one hearing scheduled uh, December 3rd. It's not necessary on that day. It says no later than. So if, uh, maybe we can hear staff uh, what exactly they meant. If you have any question, you can ask. Okay. But many members, any question, comment, concern at this point? Seeing none. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on these applications? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? To the chair, uh, we did say it, uh, uh, no later than the last committee meeting. We have a couple of issues with the application and that needs some more discussion. Uh, one is the heritage value of the property versus the road widening requirements that have been put forward by our internal departments. As well, we were waiting for CVC to weigh in, uh, which recently, I think yesterday, we received a letter from CVC. Yeah, CVC. that's what I was gonna, so, they uh, don't have any concern they at don't this have point, any no objections. Concerns. We just need some time to meet internally and possibly with the applicant to understand uh, the other conflicting requirements and how we wish to proceed. So I don't anticipate it going to December 3rd. It could be earlier. Okay, Ms. Corzola. Just to, to add to that um, through you, Mr. Chair, there ha it, we have become aware that there has been some requests for land dedication as well that will affect the overall um, configuration of these properties and we would want to ensure that the appropriate variances have been identified prior to proceeding with the consent. Okay. So back to you. You understand and accept any question you have in your mind at this point or you can work with the staff later on. Uh, I guess uh, uh, we just received the Credit Valley Conservation comments yesterday. Uh, that's why we got uh, yesterday in the mail. So staff obviously need time to assess everything. Uh, uh, no later than last committee meeting of 2019 uh, doesn't mean it has to be on December the 3rd. Uh, I guess you need to be in touch with the staff moving forward. Uh, whenever they are satisfied, once they get the comments from all the departments, I guess uh, it has to be a certain time period because you know applying date for a certain date, uh, you need to send out the notices and stuff. Uh, so once that criteria fulfilled, uh, I guess uh, you can come back in front of us again. Well, I'll, I'll be notified, I guess, in the mail. Everything will come. Through the chair, I, I just would like to point out that it, there is a possibility, you know, based on, um, you know, where staff have become aware of a land dedication, mm -hmm. that the consent application as well as the variance application may need to be modified or amended in some fashion. There's also the possibility that an, a, a second minor variance application might be required. So those are things that the applicant will need to discuss with staff uh, at his earliest opportunity. I, uh, I understand, uh, Ms. Myers, and thank you for pointing out. And I would ask staff now, do you think till December uh, 3rd is appropriate time because we are already in October the 1st? We don't want the applicant to, we send out the notices and then the applicant come back and then we are giving another future date. We can give any date for February or no later than February 2020 or something now rather than sending out the notices again. Through the chair, at this moment we feel that this is achievable. Uh, it, it is a matter of uh, identifying the widening. Sure, I understand. And asking for but an December 3rd is something in the beginning of December. Yeah. So roughly today is October 1st. We have 60 days. Yes. So if, if staff uh, confident, uh, even in the case of both the application need to be modified and uh, there's no deferral suggested again in December 3rd, we are, I think we are okay with that. Am I right? Members. So if, if all parties are on the same page, then uh, we are okay with the, uh, December 3rd. Yes, thank you. Okay. You, okay. Guys will, you guys will confirm that? Sorry? You'll confirm that later on, before prior to the December 3rd? Or just that's it? Well, you need to be in touch with staff, and staff will notify you. Okay. Uh, we will get the agenda the same way you will get the notice. Okay. Right? If I may, through you, Mr. Please. Chair, I would encourage the applicant to contact planning staff to arrange a meeting. It is his application exactly. that needs to be advanced. 
he needs to work with the planner. Exactly. That's why I mentioned a couple of times that you need to work with staff. Uh, as how, how do I do that? I'm just wondering. Get in touch simply. Email. They are available. You know her name. You have her card. And you know the outcome of today's meeting. And we have 60 days to work together. Right? You, you may need to provide some additional correspondence or some mm -hmm. additional comments. Uh, a, I'm not saying I, like it's completely your responsibility, but obviously you need to yeah. write it down a simple email and then uh, she will follow up with you and uh, we'll see you back uh, probably mm -hmm. earlier, if, if not earlier than December 3rd. Just check and see. Okay, Bindu, so I, yeah, I got it all here. Okay. So I'll contact Bindu when? You can contact the next half an hour, you can write down her okay. <laughs> okay, that's it then? Yeah. Okay, so anyway, I have no further discussion, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to support staff recommendation by Mr. Power, seconded by Mr. Toffler. All in favor? Okay, sir, see you okay. in near future. Thank you. No, uh, any other application, anybody else wishes to uh, withdraw or deferral their application? Sir, please see her after the application. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm not completely sure if it has to be deferred for 34 Eden Ridge. Why did you say that? Yes, I'm going to talk about that when the turn comes. Okay. I don't want to complicate that now. Okay? Okay. So. For anybody else? I guess none. So. For those unfamiliar with the Committee of Adjustment Procedure and Process, I would like to give a brief explanation and scope following some procedural matter that we have already undergone, the Secretary Treasurer will call the applications by announcing the application number, the name of the applicant and address of the subject property uh, to the application. The applicant or authorized agent representing, uh, representing the applicant will then come to the podium, state their name and address for the record, and then present the application. I request that you reserve any question or comments pertaining to the staff report until after planning staff has had an opportunity to present. If there is anyone in the attendance who wishes to speak to a particular application, you will be given the opportunity to do so when the application is presented. Any decision made here today may be appealed to the local planning tribunal, uh, appeal tribunal uh, previously through the Ontario Municipal Board. Appeals received in the city clerk's office associated with the minor variance and consent application will be processed and forwarded to LPAT. This process may be commenced with the Secretary Treasurer by filing a completed appeal form and filing fee within the prescribed 20-day appeal period. Information pertaining to the appeal process may be obtained by contacting the Secretary Treasurer within the City Clerk's Office. Now we move on to the new consent applications. Calling application B19024, 4107 Shopping Center Limited. The property is located at 152 West Drive. Good morning. Good morning. Your name and address for the record, please. Hello, my name is Abby Packenathan, and I'm representing the uh, owner of 4107 Shopping Center and mm -hmm. Tenant TDL Group. Uh, I'm the authorized agent. Okay, anybody else you wishes to add uh, beside? No. Okay, committee members, any question, comment, concern at this point? <coughs> Seeing none, anyone in the audience wish to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Staff have reviewed the request for a uh, lease in excess of 21 years in accordance with the criteria set out in the Planning Act and find the application to be supportable based on that criteria. Okay. You understand uh, there are some drafted conditions by, uh, I believe, Secretary Treasurer. 
Yep. Okay. If no further discussion, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to approve uh, by Mr. Doctor with the recommended conditions. Seconded by Mr. Power. All in favor? This is approved. Thank you. Application B19025, Elchem Company Limited. Properties located at 8160 Dixie Road. Okay. So you are the one who is representing <laughs> multiple applications today. Just two. Must be a good day for you, man. Yeah. Anyway, any question, comment? Anything you wish us to add beside whatever in front of us? Seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? For you, Mr. Chair, staff have reviewed the request for a long-term lease in excess of 21 years in conjunction with the criteria set out by the Planning Act and find the application to be supportable based on that criteria. Thank you. Do you understand uh, the two conditions? Yep. You, are you in agreement? Yes. Okay. So, uh, committee members, if no further question, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to support by Mr. Cole. The second is by uh, Ms. Doppler. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Calling application A18020, Desarin and Alma Bichon. The property is located at 40 Cranberry Crescent. Good morning, I'm Daniel Bishon, representing my parents, and I'm an authorized agent for, for this particular application at 40 Cranberry Crescent. Your name and uh, address for the record, please. <coughs> uh, my official name is Daniel Bishon, and address is 40 Cranberry Crescent, Brent, Ontario, L6Y4X2. Okay, so <laughs> anything you wish us to add in regards to your application we have in front of? No, sir. Okay, many members, any question, comment, concern at this point? Seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? To the chair, uh, we have reviewed the requested variants um, and they are intended to correct existing situations. Um, we do not see there is uh, any impact to the property or surrounding properties. Moreover, the property uh, just adjacent to this one uh, also went through a similar application to the committee and it was approved. Uh, the, the history of this is that this was built in this way by the subdivision um, builder and uh, it doesn't seem to have any negative impacts on the surrounding properties. So subject to the recommended conditions, uh, we find the variances are desirable for the appropriate development of the lands. I can read out the condition. Please. Okay. Um, that application A18-020 is supportable, subject to the following conditions. Uh, number one, that a building permit shall be obtained within 60 days of the decision of the approval for the below grade entrance to the house and the exterior below grade entrance stairs. Number two, that the below grade entrance shall not be used to access an unregistered second unit. Number three, that drainage on adjacent property shall not be adversely affected. Number four, that the extent of the variances be limited to that shown on the <coughs> sketch attached to the public notice. And that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Thank you. You understand and accept these conditions? Yes, I do. Okay, committee members, no further discussion, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to approve by Mr. Power with conditions, seconded by Mr. Doppler. All in favor? Approved. Thank you. Application A19155, Tremont M1 Condos Inc. Property is located at 180 Veterans Drive. Good morning, 
Mr. Chair and committee members. Uh, my name is Emma Barron. I represent Fremont Homes. Um, I don't have anything to add to what's been in, um, presented in the staff report. Um, and I, I have been here before for the same property. You might recognize me. But. We uh, grant one uh, approval, I believe, last year. Yes. And then there was some conversion of uh, change within the yes. floor plan? So we, um, due to market demands, um, which is actually a good thing, we've had more demand for three bedroom units. So we've converted a few of our um, two bedroom plus den units into three bedrooms. Our prior, uh, previous minor variance application did have a condition attached to it that we had to stay within a certain required parking um, spaces under the zoning bylaw. And with that conversion to three bedrooms, we exceeded it by two parking spaces. Um, so we have worked with staff to rewrite um, how we're asking for the minor variance, mm -hmm. um, which I think should give us some flexibility in, um, you know, there are market demands that come up or um, even efficiencies that we find in our design, but the way that we've written it with zoning staff and planning mm -hmm. staff will provide that flexibility moving forward. So I think, um, we found a good solution in, yeah. in, well, in good. what we're requesting today. That's good. I was there over the weekend and I find uh, the property uh, nice and clean and maintained versus last year I was there and that was one of my concerns that mm -hmm. all those visitor parking was occupied by the right. construction material or the construction vehicle. So right. those existing townhome people were having hard time but I'm glad uh, that pretty much that construction mm -hmm. phase has been over for those uh, townhomes especially, and uh, all the roads and especially those uh, visitor parkings were nicely maintained right. and uh, the construction area was fully fenced. So good work on, good. on, on we'll that. Pass it on to our site super. Committee <laughs> <laughs> uh, members, any question, comment, concern at this point? Uh, seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? For you, Mr. Chair, staff has reviewed the requested variance through the four tests as laid out in the Planning Act, and we find the application to be supportive. Thank you. Okay, and no condition, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, committee members, uh, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to approve by Mr. Cope, seconded by Ms. Stoffer. All in favor? Approve. Thank you. Thank you. Calling application A19160, Samaru and Diana Ramta Hall. Property is located at 8 Blue Silo Way. Good morning, committee chair, committee members. My name is Diana Ramta Hall and I'm the homeowner of 8 Blue Silo Way. Good morning. You wish us to add anything beside we have in front of us? No, sir. Any members, any question, comment, concern at this point? Seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? To the chair, um, we find this application supportable, subject to a few conditions. And uh, some of the uh, considerations were that there is a deck that is already approved. Um, they are intending to cover the deck with an open roofed porch. And, is uh, the existing deck is already approved with permit? Yes, or? yes. Oh. I can show you pictures if you want to see. Well, we, I was there, there at the site. Yeah. Um, I do see that there is a letter today uh, from neighbors. Uh, we do understand uh, their concerns. However, uh, when we visited the site and we saw the deck already constructed, there is multiple decks along that back elevation. Uh, for all the houses, and this is no more an encroachment than uh, it is already permitted according to the permits. Uh, subject to our conditions, we do recommend approval, and if you wish, I can read out. Please. Yeah. Uh, that the extent of the variance be limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice, uh, the proposed open roofed porch be of an open style construction, and that a building permit be obtained for the same, that drainage from the proposed roof of the porch must flow onto the subject property, 
that drainage on adjacent property shall not be adversely affected, and that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, thank you for clearing that uh, 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 concerned neighbor's uh, letter as well, Ms. Shah. Uh, I notice uh, there's no development at the back yet, and uh, eventually there will be homes. <coughs> And uh, to me, uh, that seems fine, and uh, even the porch, uh, because their side entrance uh, through the back uh, by the builder, uh, that was nice setup. And uh, I think uh, the intent over here with the homeowner is uh, to do good, not uh, to something going, uh, just taking advantage of flexibility of the bylaws. Uh, so uh, I can clearly see, just uh, for the record, we do have a letter of opposition by uh, Jesse Sturgeon and Hethel Oja, 10 Blue Silo Way, uh, showing their concerns uh, and uh, recommending not to approve this uh, application or a decision on this matter should be deferred until all residents impacted by this application have assumed occupancy. Uh, so I guess what they are uh, trying to say here is, uh, I guess uh, on this street, all the homes are already occupied. Uh, when they mentioned uh, until all residents impacted by this application may assume occupancy, I believe they are uh, talking about the seat, uh, sorry, the, the street facing the back. So the houses are not built there yet, so we can't uh, put hold on this application for more than a year or a year and a half or so. So having said that, uh, if there is any other comment concern by committee members? Seeing none, do you understand and accept these conditions? I do. Okay, if no further business, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to approve with condition by Mr. Powers, seconded by Mr. Cope, all in favor? It's approved. Thank you. Ontario Limited. The property is located at 8672 Mississauga Road. Hi, my name is Peter Chikovsky. I'm one of the owners of the property. Okay, please go ahead. You wish us to add anything else besides we have in front of us? No. <coughs> any members, any question, comment, concern at this point? <coughs> Seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? <coughs> Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Through you, Mr. Chair, staff have reviewed the application and find that application A19-161 is supportable, subject to the following conditions being imposed. Number one, that the applicant pay the outstanding review fees to the Credit Valley Conservation Authority. Number two, that arrangements regarding servicing be made set to the satisfaction of the region appeal. And three, that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. So those conditions are just coming from, at the time of writing, the Credit Valley Conservation Authority hadn't yet received their fee. Um, and then in regard to the region's requirements, they had kind of given us some high-level comments, so we just wanted to make sure that all of their concerns can be appropriately addressed. For the record, I would like to acknowledge uh, the letter from CVC stating uh, no objection for this application. Uh, you understand and accept these conditions? Yes. Many members, if no further discussion, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to approve by Mr. Cope uh, with conditions and seconded yes. by Ms. Doffler. All in favor? This is approved. Thank you. Nice place. Thank you. Calling application A19162, Medi Matla. The property is located at 78A Elizabeth Street. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Hamza Begheri. I'm an agent of the owner. And I don't have anything else to add. Okay. Uh, you can, you wish to add anything no. else besides we have this application in front of us? Yeah. <coughs> Many members, any question, comment, concern at this point? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? 
Through you, Mr. Chair, staff have reviewed the application A19162 and find that it's supportable subject to the following conditions. That the extent of the variances be limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice. That drainage on adjacent properties shall not be adversely affected. That the owner shall obtain a building permit for the additions prior to commencing construction. And that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. You understand and accept these conditions? Yes. Committee members, if no question, comment, concern, then uh, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to approve with condition by Mr. Power, seconded by Mr. Dockler. All in favor? Approved. Thank you. Thank you. Calling application A19163, Raman by Patel. The property is located at 85 John Street. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair and Committee. My name is Allison Manette. I am acting as <coughs> agent on behalf of Mr. Patel. I'm here uh, with my husband, Simon Renegan. Uh, together, we are the ones who are looking to open the yoga studio. Okay. Anything else you wish us to add beside uh, your letter and your application? You no, add anything? Fine. No. Okay. All good. Committee members, any comment, concern, question at this point? Seeing none. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none. Staff, could you please win your comments? Through you, Mr. Chair, staff have reviewed application A19163 and find that the application is supportable subject to the following conditions that the commercial school be limited to a yoga studio, that the owner obtain a building permit for a change of use prior to occupancy of the building, that the commercial school, the yoga studio, be limited to the commercial unit as indicated on the sketch attached to the public notice, and that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Do you understand and accept these conditions? Um, I actually do have a concern um, regarding sure. number two. Mm -hmm. uh, the building permit. So I guess I'm just a little bit confused. Um, the property itself, all we plan to do is paint. Um, when I look at the application for the building permit, it requires that I obtain architectural drawings, uh, structural plans, mechanical plans. Um, my concern about all of this is, uh, number one, the cost involved as we are you know, bootstrapping the entire enterprise ourselves. Uh, and number two, just the length of time um, that it's going to take for this process to occur. Um, currently, my opening operations budget does not, you know, allow for any type of architectural drawings and whatnot, which I can imagine are going to be quite pricey as well, as we have um, an opening date of December 1st in order for my business to be supported and profitable. So. And the gentleman, Mr. Patel, has been, because he also supports our project, <laughs> Uh, and really wants to see this through. He's been waiting patiently for eight weeks for me to sign the lease, which I'm supposed to do today. But uh, if we have to go through with this building permit, um, we're going to have to really think about this. I understand your concerns. Uh, staff will address. But I guess uh, I don't think so. Staff is concerned about uh, your paint or anything inside. Uh, they are more about uh, how your interior, your walls, and your interior, uh, that's what they want to attach, so this is what they are uh, approving. So, but I guess uh, I'll refer it to the staff and they can comment, and then if you have any comment further, you can. Um, okay, so the staff can answer yeah, the sure. questions regarding um, ar like the architectural drawings that are let's, let's get some clarity on it, Ms. Corzola. Thank you. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair, and, and forgive me, I'm not the building code expert. <laughs> I do, however, know that when you change from one use, being the original retail construction, to a new use, this may be classified as a different occupancy under the building code. Um, so there may be need, even though no construction is proposed, for certain upgrades and changes to be made with respect to exiting, with respect to you know other fire safety measures. Um, I, I don't know what those might be, but it does require an analysis of the building itself um, anytime it, someone changes use within an existing property. Um, perhaps for comfort, and, and I don't even know whether 
did we receive? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna allow um, planning staff or request that they actually read out comments from our building division. Sure. Um, I was going to suggest a change to the condition that simply said, if necessary, sure. um, obtain a building permit. Yeah, but something to... I think this is more of a caution that any change of use requires a building permit. Even if you didn't impose it as a condition through committee of adjustment, it would still be a requirement of the Ontario Building Code as prescribed by the province. Sure. Staff? And further to that, Mr. Chair, so the comments received from um, our building department did say, um, please be advised that the proposed uses for the space is considered business and personal service as defined in the building code, changing from a previous use of retail as defined in the building code. Therefore, a permit is required for a change of use prior to the space being occupied. And they go on further to say that should the committee approve the application, please add a condition that the owner obtain a permit for a change of use prior to occupancy of the building. And if there were any questions, we can reach out and contact our colleagues in building. I, I, just, I guess we, the concern is with the building, I don't, we don't have an issue with exit signs and things of that nature, but uh, that building has the bathroom in the basement. Okay. And if the bathroom needs to be on the main floor for any reason, then it's not suitable for a yoga studio. We don't have the room. So we don't want to sign a lease and mm -hmm. and figure out that we, you know. So we kind of need clarity if that bathroom can be grandfathered into the basement or not. Well, that's your valid concern. But at the same time, when I look, when we hear uh, staff comments, uh, it's a change of uh, use as they mentioned. Uh, and uh, they're willing to modify the term if necessary. So that means maybe those minor, you know, uh, exit signs and stuff, which sort of the previous uh, business owner maybe overlooked or something. Sure. So this is something new and this is for yeah. the safety and the building codes are there actually for our safety if we look at that point of view, but I understand. Uh, is maybe, uh, is there any requirement that the washroom has to be on the same level? Through you, Mr. Chair, we would have to defer to building division staff. I, I don't know what the, there's certainly barrier-free requirements um, mm -hmm. for new construction. Now, being that this is an existing building, there may be some relief under part 11 for existing buildings, but that is something that they would have to clarify with our building division staff. Um, certainly, it doesn't hurt to impose the condition because it is a requirement regardless of whether you impose this condition. Um, and if they fail to obtain a permit, they could be cited for a violation of the building code for change of use without a permit. Um, so following this meeting, if you choose to approve, I would encourage the applicants to head to the building division and find out exactly what it is that they need and whether there's any relief that can be provided with that um, washroom in the basement. Yeah, I, see. I guess that's just our timeline. Like how long would that take to... They should be able to tell you through you, Mr. Chair. Um, they'll give you an idea of what the code requires and whether you have to hire a professional is really the, the, the issue. And if it doesn't fit with your timeline, then that's a business decision that will have to be made. But I, it, uh, based on the communication from our building division to planning staff, it appears that a building permit is necessary for change of use. They must have reviewed the archive file to realize that it was originally finished as a retail establishment, which has different construction and exiting and washroom requirements from a yoga studio, which is business and personal service occupancy. Normally, we don't have a representative, a representative from the building department here at the committee. So what, uh, let's say the committee is going to approve the application today and the building department comes back and uh, that, no, you have to have washroom on the main floor. Uh, so that means, uh, uh, and if they are not wishes to go that route, I guess, or uh, what we can do here, uh, if you wishes to come back in the next possible date, whatever the sooner, and meantime you head out to the building department, check with them, and uh, see what they say, and then we can review your application in the next hearing. Well, I don't think that really matters if it goes, this part goes through, we just have to decide on the building permit, is that correct? I. I agree with you, but at the same time, uh, this committee can still uh, work, I believe, in, in the capacity, even if the building department is saying something different and you still wishes to uh, continue. 
and then the committee can still make the decision even if they think something different or okay, you, you can have saying. the variance to have the washroom on the uh, on the main floor or they wants to have the washroom in the basement please correct me if uh, yeah, if, if i'm through, wrong through you mr chair no this committee has no authority whatsoever to vary a building code requirement that would be a building code requirement not a requirement of the zoning bylaw which is what this committee's authority is so in that case, what my suggestion is to go ahead uh, with uh, this application. Mm -hmm. We are more than uh, happy to amend <coughs> uh, this uh, condition number two with, if necessary. Uh, as Ms. Corzola indicated, uh, there could be uh, different building code guidelines for the new construction versus existing. As, as in grandfathered uh, in or something along those I believe lines. so. Uh, depend on the location and where exactly you are. Okay. Uh, so I guess uh, you can, uh, please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to caution you because mm -hmm. this is a big item, so you're right to, to bring it up. Uh, you may be grandfathered. Um, I would suggest that you check on the uh, change of use um, because that, that could be a big item to address. Um, and just for the record, um, my office is in the downtown core. I drive by that little building quite often, and I think your use would be spectacular for Thank it. You. I think it would um, add to the community. Mm -hmm. So I'm supportive of, of the use that you want to have. I'm appreciative that you want to dress it up a little bit. Um, but I would suggest that you check this um, in, in some detail because the change of use could be uh, could be the issue, even mm -hmm. if the washroom is okay the way that it is. You've addressed parking, which I think is great, mm -hmm. um, but I think it requires a little bit of mm -hmm. uh, research into that matter. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So uh, suggestions, uh, Ms. Corzola, the staff is willing to amend condition number two. Through you, Mr. Chair, yes, certainly it's it's not unreasonable to say if necessary, that would apply to anything. Um, I think we've established from the comments for the building division that it is apparently necessary. Um, so we can certainly include that as an amendment through you at an abundance of caution in case for some reason it's not necessary. Um, aside from that, I think that the committee has everything they need to proceed with a decision on the, the permitted use variant. Okay. And uh, for them to uh, direct to the building department, is there uh, someone uh, you would suggest uh, they should speak with to avoid some time delay as they are concerned and so is this committee? Uh, certainly through you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> I would recommend that they, they simply head from here to the Flower City campus over at McLaughlin mm -hmm. and Queen and speak with anyone at the counter. We'll be able to provide them guidance. Um, if some escalation is required, we can speak with one of the, uh, the supervisors. So it would be building division staff, though I'm, I'm sure for the most part, um, the applicants have been dealing with zoning staff, so the building code staff are who they're now going to be transferred over to. If you feel any delay over there, say, you know, Ms. Corzola, and yeah. you just met her, <laughs> right? And then uh, they will, uh, I think, prioritize. Okay, thank you. She's very well respected there, so, <laughs> right? Anyway, so looking for a motion to proceed. If no further discussion, motion to approve with the amended conditions. Correct. Seconded by, uh, sorry, by Mr. Cope, seconded by Mr. Power. All in favor? Approved. Thank, Thank you. you. Have Good a wonderful luck. day. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Calling application A19164, PMD Investments Limited. The property is located at 20 Rivermount Road. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. My name is Patrick Pearson with Glenn Schnarr and Associates. I am here on behalf of our client, who is the applicant. As you can see in the minor variance sketch, the subject site is located north of Steeles Avenue West, east of Light Beam Terrace, and west of Rivermont Road. Our client is proposing to establish a commercial school, mm -hmm. specifically a tutoring facility, 
on the subject site where the existing zoning currently does not permit the use. As outlined in the staff report, the proposed use will make no alterations to the existing site and the parking requirements approved in the site plan will be met. No negative impacts are anticipated as the proposed commercial school use will have a similar impact and functionality as other commercial uses permitted in the service commercial zone. We have reviewed the staff report and have no objections to the proposed conditions. In our opinion, the application meets the floor test under the Planning Act and we request the committee approve the application. Thanks for letting me present this application. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to try sure. and answer them. Sure. Thank you. Do you remember any question, comment, concern at this point? Seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, the application A19164 is supportable, subject to the following conditions being imposed. One, that the extent of the variances be limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice, and two, that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Sir, uh, do you understand and accept these conditions? We do, yeah. If no further uh, discussion, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to approve with condition by Ms. Duffler, seconded by Mr. Power, all in favor? This is approved, thank you. Thank you. I look for some motions uh, to put forward. I guess maybe the committee members feel I'm going too fast. <laughs> Calling application A19165, Anita McNabb. The property is located at 34 Eden Ridge Drive. <coughs> Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. I'm uh, Lenny Jalisi. I'm representing Anita McNabb, uh, 34 Eden Ridge Drive. Okay. So I, you and I both know why you indicated that in the beginning. Yes. So let me uh, I was clear. Up to speed yesterday. Yes, I was there Saturday for my site visit. As yes. you know, we all go to mm -hmm. the site visits. Uh, I saw a little dog. I didn't want to scare anyone through the window. Yeah. And uh, we normally go, as you, you can see, multiple applications, and mm -hmm. we know what we are there to look for. I tried to go in the back door. If the fence was locked, the dog keep barking meantime. I didn't want to scare anyone, so I knock on the door. Uh, no one came, and I was not sure what to do. Meantime, 10 minutes goes by, and then the tenant mm -hmm. uh, from the side door came out and yes. uh, I showed my ID and that's why I'm here and I need access to the backyard. Mm -hmm. She said, I can't let you in because I'm the tenant here. So I said, okay, would you be able to speak with the property owner? Uh, then she called, uh, I guess, the property owner, I guess, uh, ma'am, are you the property owner? Okay, sorry, my apologies. Uh, so she called property owner, uh, she came outside after 10 minutes and uh, the property owner and uh, the tenant when they were both communicating mm -hmm. so and I could hear because I was standing next to her she said we don't allow you to go in our property so uh, so number one I said that's okay I this is my name and I'm from the committee mm -hmm. if you are not allowing me to uh, enter uh, in your backyard so that means I can't see what I'm here for. I won't be able to review your application, simply, because if I'm there already, she goes, you need to come while you are here, you need to come some other time or something. I said, I can't guarantee based on the busy schedule we have. And this is already mm -hmm. two days, uh, pretty much. I think they were confused as to why you were there on Saturday. I guess maybe they didn't understand well, the, the schedule at which well, you operate. I fully respect, but I guess this is, uh, and. <laughs> With all due respect, mm -hmm. I believe this is your failure as an agent. You did not notify your client properly. Well, she I had, it was not about the weekend. She was concerned that why even a committee member is there to inspect 
as an agent, that's your responsibility. No, no, they knew that somebody would come by to take a look at the backyard. The problem came from is the fact that the woman that lives in the basement dwelling unit had no idea what you were. And I but have his evidence I did, here. Sir, I, I, I did talk to the homeowner. Mm -hmm. When she called, then I, I thought maybe she's not did able to. Did you try to enter the dwelling? Sorry? Did you want to enter the Why dwelling? Why would I enter to the dwelling? But I have here a statement from her saying that you wanted to enter the I basement and the main I clearly floor. to the fence gate okay. at, well, at, the, I have, at the backyard. May I enter this as evidence? Sorry? Her side of the story. She's not here, but she did write this letter indicating the events that, her side of the story of the events that unfolded on Saturday. Well, I, uh, honestly, I don't want to go into my story or her story, so, and uh, I'm okay, not. are we uh, able I'm here to, to proceed? Uh, please allow me to speak, sir. Yes. I'm not here uh, to, we are here to find solution. Absolutely. I'm not here suggesting anything, but uh, I'm, I'm willing to proceed with the application. Great. But uh, I, I won't be able to participate in the voting because I denied uh, the access, but next time you need to be careful. Mm -hmm. uh, once you are dealing, I don't know, this municipality or anywhere else, please give clear instructions to your clients that the committee members do visit. Okay, maybe next time more clearly identify yourself. Maybe have a business card on hand. You scared her, for what it's worth. Sir, yes. were you there? No, I wasn't. So how you can say I did not identify myself? I like to imagine when I'm that I'm showing my, my badge clearly with my ID. What else you want me to identify? I'm, I'm, I'm going to suggest here that my client's not lying to me. Sorry? My client, I feel, is not lying to me. You think I'm lying to you in camera? No. But anyway. Yes. <laughs> If we can oh, proceed, man. that would be ideal. Sorry? If we can proceed, that would be ideal. I just want to move on from this as much as you do. So you want to move on? So please do your job properly next time, especially when you're dealing with the committee. Okay. Okay? Many members, uh, could you please proceed your uh, application? Sir, you're here. I'm yeah. asking you to proceed with your application if you want to add something to your no, there, There's nothing to add. I was contacted by a uh, Shelby, I, I'm sorry, I forget her last name, uh, with a suggestion that the overhang setback for the roof be uh, increased to 1.5 meters or 5 feet versus okay. the uh, 2 feet that we're currently suggesting, while the, the deck surface itself can be maintain a 2 foot setback. And we're fine with that condition. Okay. Any other comment, question, concern by committee members? Seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Staff have reviewed application A19-165 and find, find it supportable in part, subject to a number of conditions being imposed. Um, they are a little bit wordy, so bear with me here. Sure. <clears throat> that variance three be approved in part as follows that the interior side yard set back to an open roof porch in the front yard shall be a minimum of 0 0.61 meters or two feet. And part two, that the interior side yard set back to an open roof porch in the rear yard shall be a minimum of 1.524 meters or five feet. This setback shall apply to the roof structure only provided that the landscaped deck is less than 0 0.6 meters above ground level. Condition number two, that the extent of the approved variances be generally limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice, subject to the modifications required by condition one above. Number three, that drainage on adjacent properties shall not be adversely affected, and all drainage from the open roof porch shall flow onto the applicant's property. Number three, that drainage on adjacent properties shall not be adversely affected, and all drainage from the accessory structure shall flow onto the applicant's property. Number five, that the proposed rear deck and proposed front, front porch will be of an open style construction and shall not be enclosed. Number six, that a building permit be obtained for the accessory structure within 60 days of the final date of committee's decision. Number seven, that the trailer located in the front yard of the dwelling be removed from the front yard. And finally, that failure to comp comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Okay, sorry, do you understand and accept these conditions? I do. Okay, so if no further discussion, uh, I can see uh, uh, the property is there and based on the drawings and everything, the owner's intent is to add the value in the property and that's where we look, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And many members, if no further discussion, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to proceed. Yeah. 
by Mr. Power, seconded by Mr. Cope. All in favor? Ms. Carrier. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to confirm that we were planning to vote on this matter. Yes, uh, I do. Calling application A19167, Unique Builders, Inc. The property is located at 15 Sunpack Boulevard, unit number eight. Uh, good morning, my name is Manny Chauhan. I'm the agent for the owner, and we are seeking to ask you for relief uh, to permit 81 parking spaces on site, whereas the bylaw requires a minimum of 84 parking spaces. I'm here to answer any questions. Many members, any comment, question, concern at this point? No. Seeing none, uh, maybe we'll have some questions after uh, the staff report. Um, if, if there are any, we are to come up with the questions. Sure. Uh, is there anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? None. Uh, for the record, we do have a letter uh, by one of the concerned neighbor from Unit number six and seven of seven Sun Pack within the same plaza. Is the is that gentleman present here? I don't think so. Uh, so the letter says initially he was the first one who tried to uh, get the same variance, and uh, according to this letter, uh, the staff uh, at that time uh, was not interested and recommend him to resubmit the drawing without the mezzanine. And uh, he feels he misled by the planning office. And uh, as he was the first one to apply for the building permit in the plaza and wanted a mezzanine, he revised uh, uh, his application. Uh, whereas the unit 1 to 5 or 7 Sunpack has over 700 square meter of mezzanine and planning office has supported uh, that application. Uh, where he was asking uh, for only, uh, I believe, uh, 54 square meter. I have learned that. Uh, sorry, 100 square meter. 100 square meter. So we'd like to know some uh, 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 staff's comments on particular that letter. Uh, I do notice in that uh, area, especially in that uh, plaza, uh, the parking is an issue. If not now, it will be in near future when the plaza is fully occupied. And uh, on a personal note, I do know that uh, the unit one to five at the corner, because there is a one media outlet is operating a studio uh, from there. And I personally been to that studio when they uh, inaugurate that studio. So I can see uh, the shortage of parking already in the plaza. And uh, if that unit was not required variance, and uh, if somehow uh, staff, uh, as the gentleman felt, uh, discouraged him to uh, come with the mezzanine, and uh, now staff is suggesting a positive report on this one. So we'd like to have some, uh, some staff's uh, view on that, uh, on previous applications and uh, this uh, application. Please. Through, <clears throat> through you, Mr. Chair, I, I, before planning staff has an opportunity to speak about any other associated variances and the merits of them, I'm just going to give you a, a brief overview of how parking is calculated in an industrial mall. Um, so whenever a permit comes in or whenever there's construction proposed or a unit finish proposed, um, zoning staff will review the parking um, for the total of the requirement based on all of the uses and floor areas that are existing in the building. Um, there have been previous variances for this site specifically to add some flexibility and commercial use. Um, and that additional commercial use was based on a um, parking requirement that every time a commercial use was added, parking would be reevaluated. So there was a permit issued for the office in unit six and seven, which I assume there was a proposal at the time for mezzanine that perhaps the parking supply 
on site didn't propose. So they would have been referred to planning staff to discuss the potential of obtaining a variance for that. Um, likewise, when the radio studio that is operating um, a good chunk of the building on the corner went in, they also proposed a mezzanine for which there was insufficient parking. To resolve that parking deficiency at the time, <clears throat> excuse me, the radio station made application for a revision to the site plan to add additional parking spaces to the site. So that's how they overcame their associated parking deficiency. And the parking required for a radio station is far less than a parking requirement for an office space. So at the time they were deficient four spaces, I believe it was, and they added four spaces to the site to accommodate that parking deficiency. Um, so with this new application, of course, they came to add a mezzanine, zoning staff reviewed it, said there's now again another parking deficiency and to resolve that the only option would be to either obtain a variance or rezone the land. Um, again, this is for, I believe it's an industrial use, so it's, it's a very small parking spot where a, or a very small parking deficiency, whereas for an office, it may have been a greater parking deficiency based on a, a floor area of, you said 57 square meters, that would be a two space deficiency, whereas for this 57 square meters is a one space deficiency. So that's just doing the math and calculating parking. That is how zoning staff evaluates every permit that comes before us. Um, I will you know, request that planning staff speak to you know, whether opinions differed back in 2015 when the office went in and whether there's been some change based on the parking study that was submitted to allow them to support it in this case. Just one uh, quick question to you, Ms. Corzola. Let's say the committee approved uh, this variance and uh, the property owner goes ahead with the mezzanine and down the road they sell this unit and somebody else comes with the new use. So what will happen in that case? So if it's a new use, and it, as we heard earlier, any yeah. change of use requires a change of use building permit, and at that time, parking for that particular use would be evaluated. So if down the road this does change into an office, then there would be, we would not be able to issue that permit for the change of use because there's insufficient parking on the site to support an office use. And one another uh, following question I have in my mind, uh, how about uh, the condo corporation uh, or the other units? Uh, for example, one unit owners, uh, they wrote it down to, uh, to uh, clerk's office that uh, this is the history with them. Uh, you don't feel that uh, condo corporation uh, should have granted this uh, request as well because this is going to impact the rest of the units as well? I believe they did that. And that is why we made the application. But I, we don't have any letter from yeah. the condo corporation. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know whether the parking is in condo ownership, whether it's individual ownership. I would have to defer to Ms. Myers to, to see whether appropriate documentation was obtained to um, allow for a parking variance on this site. I don't know whether in 2015 when the other owner mm -hmm. was contemplating a mezzanine that it was actually a condominium at that time. I, I, I'm not certain or whether it was simply that the condo court didn't support it or they didn't, you know, they have the choice to proceed whether staff supported it or not. And I, mm -hmm. I don't see any indication of a variance that would have otherwise been refused. I just want to comment uh, on this particular site. Uh, two times in the past, uh, there was variances. Uh, one time on March 4th, 2014, um, at that time to expand the permitted use and uh, the parking spaces. And then I guess uh, previously in 2008, uh, at that time maybe the plaza was in under construction. Uh, so uh, before we proceed, I guess uh, I would like to hear uh, planning staff's comments and uh, then we can probably discuss. The chair, thank you. Um, we received this application, and uh, there is a parking justification study that was uh, attached to the application. When we did our internal reviews, we looked at the older applications. The site plan um, number SP08 004.002 that approved um, the use of the mezzanine for units one to five of Seven Sun Pack for the radio station. That did include uh, parking uh, analysis also, and they provided four additional stalls. 
So after that, whatever the users have been uploaded so far, we have calculated the parking requirement based on that. And uh, the parking study has been reviewed by our transportation and all the internal departments. So based on the evidence we have so far, we do support this application. But like Ms. Karzala said, any new, any further application to change the users will require another application for variance. Thank you. Sure, uh, Ms. Uh, uh, sorry, Ms. Uh, Mr. Power has a comment, but I guess if you can read the conditions first and then Mr. Power will have the follow -up. Thank you. Um, regarding the conditions, uh, we have uh, spoken with the applicant and we do re uh, require one of them to be removed, number three. Um, so I, I can go ahead with the remaining ones and they do agree to the removal of that condition. Since the, uh, the unit owner um, or the tenant of this unit uh, would not have any um, power or um, would not be able to influence the uh, variances uh, to be advertised to other unit owners. So we feel that that condition is a bit onerous and we are going to be removing that condition. So we are left with number one, two, and four. Could you please read uh, these three conditions? So number one is that the extent of the variances be limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice. Number two is that the requirement for parking for any combination of uses permitted in the Industrial 4, Section 1548, which is M41548 zone, be calculated at the applicable parking rate in accordance with the zoning bylaw and shall not exceed 84 parking spaces. Number four, which would be three, is that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Thank you. So, uh, in regards to number three, uh, the one first added and now is being removed. Uh, agreement of purchase and sale or the tenancy. This particular unit, uh, uh, whoever the applicant is, they own the unit. They are not renting. They just bought it. They bought it, right? Yes. So, uh, so the reason of uh, this condition to uh, staff is suggesting to remove because they already bought and. Um, they will not be able to influence the committee to agree to putting it in the purchase and sale agreement mm -hmm. uh, because they don't have any power over the committee, over the uh, corporation. It is the corporation who will have to make that choice, not the unit owner or the applicant. Okay. Okay. Any question, comment, concern? Mr. Power? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I just have one question in regards to the survey for the parking spaces. Is it um, a true representation if it's always done on a Thursday? The surveys? You mean the study, uh, the parking study, right? The parking study, yes. And I noticed there are two uh, studies. Uh, uh, one is revised. What was there to revise if applicant can so, shed some light? Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, Shah, please, uh, as to Mr. Power's question. Uh, yes, uh, the revision happened because the number of parking that was calculated through the study was incorrect. So staff uh, helped the applicant calculate all the areas, including the original GFAs and the approved mezzanine areas and the number of variances that have happened in the past. So now it is a true representation of the total GFA of the property. But I guess uh, what Mr. Power is uh, asking uh, there are study uh, got done on three uh, times, uh, July 11th, July 18th, and July 13th. So it's happened to be on Thursday during the weekdays and on Saturday. So what he's asking, is there something uh, mandatory that uh, they have to go on uh, Thursday? And um, uh, my follow-up question is, why only one day in a week? Normally, we look for these studies for consecutive days. Um, since this is an industrial and, uh, area, uh, we do, uh, uh, transportation staff uh, does require a weekday study for that. And uh, from Only what Only one day in the weekday, Misha, is okay? So uh, they did uh, confirm with the terms of reference of this study, and we did check with that with the, whether this will be acceptable, and it was. So I can uh, delve into that a bit uh, more if you require me to. Mm -hmm. the, uh, 
this particular site has four units, building A, and yeah. two other units that are actually gone. So they're four units more or less owned by people. Rest of the units are all vacant. So the, plan, the transportation, uh, the uh, consultant could not use this site as being the site where he could bring out a parking study. So they used a proxy study and a proxy <coughs> site in which they did on two occasions, on uh, July 11th and July 14th. Mm -hmm. And uh, they concluded that there was sufficient parking or there will be sufficient parking in the future for this site. Yeah. I, uh, uh, Mr. Power? Yeah, sure. I would suggest just based on who the tenants are in this complex that Monday or Tuesday would be a better day for a parking study, not a Thursday. So as I said, the parking study was not concluded on this site. It was a proxy site mm -hmm. for which they had already information and they already had the, the study done on that site. So they could not use this site to actually do a parking study. If they had done, they would have come out with a report that most of the days everything is vacant. Okay. Because, because there's, not, there's no utilization yet. on this site. So, just my question uh, you're not representing uh, the entire complex. You're representing no, just one unit. But as you mentioned, there are only four businesses are there in this plaza. Presently, that's, when, that's my understanding. Other units are still uh, the owner, uh, the one builder owns. They have not uh, sold? The corporation has not sold it yet. So in the event, uh, whoever is going to purchase uh, those future units, will they be notified about all these variances in the agreement of purchase and sale? Um, that is something, if you wish, um, you can have as a condition that the staff, you know, they get in touch with the corporation and bring it to their notice and make a demand from them. I don't believe that that uh, demand can be made from my applicant. Sure, Mr. Power? Well, I think the challenge would be with this, this particular site would keep coming before the committee for yeah. additional parking variances as tenants keep occupying sites. So before, um, before everything, you know, before I came to this particular uh, council, there was mezzanine floors that were built. There were, op they were, um, they were uh, staff, uh, you know, attempts to consolidate the whole site. Basically, you only required 68 parking spaces for the users that were there initially, but 77 were provided. After all the other uh, users came in, mm -hmm. that 77 jumped to 81. And we had that figure cleaned up. So subsequent to that, when um, the council uh, approved another uh, variance, it came to 79 parking spaces that were required and 77 were existing on site. Mm -hmm. So with our application, we are trying to now see that whatever the present use is, despite mm -hmm. the shortages created yeah. by anybody, we are now attempting <coughs> to clean up the slate, and that is why we had the first revision for our consult, uh, parking uh, justification study. Sure. We had asked that we have 82 parking spaces, whereas 81 um, are present. I understand, yep. and uh, Ms. Corzola uh, said good point that this this unit is going to be limited with this proposed use as you're seeking. Yes. So I'm satisfied on that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, after having the discussion, I am okay with the, this present uh, scenario, and yes. I'm okay to go ahead with staff recommendation. Yes. But uh, given the fact that uh, majority of the plaza is still vacant and the number of parkings are already sure, uh, I personally feel that anyone who is going to purchase units or uh, the tenant is going to be moved there as a business owner. I want staff to have some sort of assurance to us so they can notify uh, uh, the property owner, the developer, uh, that there has to be some written consent from those future property owners or, or those uh, tenants, if that is something possible. No. So I think what uh, the uh, city of Brampton has done recently is that they require the corporation to give in writing that they have no objection to any uh, variances or any of that issues. And when the collectively the corporation, whoever they are at that time, 
makes the decision that they would allow the application to move forward, then it is on merit that the council will agree to it or not agree to it. But those, um, those policies are already in place mm -hmm. where the corporation will have to give an NOC or no objection to that application before even you will accept it. So, so I guess we will deal with uh, those future applications as they come. But as they uh, come, yes. Do we have uh, any acknowledgement that the Condo Corporation has approved uh, their suggested variance? Through you, Mr. Chair, I can confirm that we have received from the Condominium Corporation, as we requested, a certified copy of a resolution of the Board of Directors mm -hmm. um, where they have had a meeting and they've signed and authorized the applicant to come in and submit this application okay. to the committee. We would not accept the application without that resolution of the Board of Directors from the uh, Condominium Corporation. Okay, that's good to know. <coughs> so anyway, I guess uh, staff uh, will have to juggle with those future applications because uh, eventually they'll come. And uh, now the plaza is pretty much empty. So whoever is coming, uh, the first come first basis, uh, they are getting their approvals, but uh, there's a letter from one of the gentlemen who applied, uh, he, he, according to him, he was the first one and he got discouraged by, I don't know, by staff or whatever the reasons, and uh, he had to amend his application, but I just wanted to put that on record. Maybe uh, somebody can write back to that letter on behalf of staff, or uh, uh, if that's possible, or we can uh, give him some sort of reply that w what was the reason uh, behind his application or uh, or maybe uh, the gentleman will be notified uh, with the decision uh, itself. So anyway, uh, if no further discussion, looking for a motion to proceed. Through you, Mr. Chair, just um, a question to staff, if I might. Uh, are we able to, we understand that there's a letter, we have acknowledgement uh, that the Condo Corp is in agreement with this. But we could, could we put that in as a condition of approval that the letter has been received? And is, uh, we, have, we have received the letter, the resolution, and if, through you, Mr. Chair, and this has been through our legal department. Okay. Verified. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, that is fine. So I guess uh, there are three total conditions. Yes. Uh, so looking for a motion to proceed. Any members, if no further discussion. Motion to approve with conditions by Ms. Duffler, seconded by Mr. Power. All in favor? It's approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Calling application A19-168-218. 518-5715 Ontario, Inc. And the property is located at 11570 McBean Drive. Good morning, members of the committee. Good morning. Um, my name is Eric Marutsu. I'm from, from CanDevCon on behalf of the owner at 11, <coughs> excuse me, 570 McBean Drive. We've been here a couple times, I think, for the same application, as you're aware, uh, for different matters, I guess, consents and some variances previously. Um, we're here today to request a variance that was um, actually result of a condition imposed in the last uh, minor variance we had to further reduce the lot area. Um, this is because we require a right-of-way widening and uh, it brings us beneath the previous variance that we were approved for, for the lot area. So we were asking for a variance to be uh, approved for 0.59 hectares. Any question, comment, concern at this point? Seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Staff are in support of this uh, application subject to the following conditions. That a minimum lot frontage of 85 meters be provided and that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Okay. Uh, you understand and accept? Yes. Okay, if no further discussion, looking for a motion to approve. Motion to approve with staff recommendation by Mr. Power, seconded by Mr. Cope. All in favor? Thank you. Calling 
application A19-169, Rama Sadib and, um, and others. Property is located at 55 Peelton Heights Road. Hi, good morning. My name is Rama Sadib. I'm one of the homeowners at 55 Peelton Heights Road. Okay. You wish to add something on your application? Uh, I'm going to wait till the staff uh, okay, gets sure. their comments in. Any question, comment, concern at this point? Seeing none, anyone in the audience uh, wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as you know, with minor variance, there are four tests that it has to be weighed against, and all four of those tests have to be passed in order for staff to provide support. In this instance, only three of the tests of a minor variance were satisfied by this request, and as such, staff find that application A19-169 is not supportable. Okay, sir. So the comment I would like to make, uh, the email I received said that uh, the, my house was in low density housing, I believe. So that's the feedback I received. I wasn't aware of any tests that, or conditions that had to be met before the variance application. So um, basically the, the variance is that like my parking space is this small maybe, like mm -hmm. roughly. So um, if we are not gonna proceed with the application, I'd like to ask staff if they would like to offer me a resolution. So when you said, uh, you must have received this uh, report by staff. Yes. So in this one, if you look at, uh, there are, uh, when you read the current situation, one, two, three, and four, these are the four tests uh, they, they were referring just for your knowledge. Okay. Okay? So uh, what is the uh, real issue here? Uh, is about uh, uh, the depth of the driveway or, uh, or the, uh, like we are, so basically what they're requesting is uh, third parking uh, space. Okay. Three, Mr. Know? Chair, um, the request is to vary the requirements of the third parking space required to register a second unit which brings us to section 1016 of the zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. And within our official plan, there are very specific requirements that explicitly state that when a request is made to vary section 1016, the only resolution is to not approve the variance, but to rezone the entire property to accommodate that. Um, in this case, it is the spot inside the garage is about 18 centimeters shy of what it needs to be to satisfy that requirement on its own. Okay. You want to say something, uh, Mr. Powers? So what would be, I, I guess, a resolution for these folks? Instead of just denying it, can we come to a resolution to help them out? Through you, Mr. Chair, sure. the, the only resolution, well, there, there are a couple of options. This variance is only necessary if this property is to be able to qualify for the registration of a second unit. If there's no second unit, then this variance isn't necessary. Many properties throughout the city do not qualify for the creation of a second unit, including this one, which is why they're here seeking approval for the variance that's required to reduce the size of a required parking space, the one that's inside their garage. Um, the, the resolution in that regard is in your hands. So the, the only way that they can create a second unit is to either get approval of this variance, um, which planning staff is telling you is in contradiction and conflict with the requirements of the official plan that requires the lands to be rezoned where they cannot meet the implementing provisions of the zoning bylaw for the creation of the second unit. In other words, when council approved the zoning bylaw and the official plan related to second units and the creation of those units, they recognized that properties were not going to comply. And rather than ha put that decision in the committee's hand, council wants that to be a, a decision of council through a rezoning. So you do have the opportunity to approve this variance as one option. The applicant also has the option of applying to rezone the land, which as we know is a fairly expensive and you know, time consuming process. Alternatively, they don't create a second unit. 
they, they cannot legalize a second unit and they use the property as it was zoned to be used for the purpose of a single detached dwelling or a semi detached dwelling. Those are the three options that are available. But they can still construct their basement for their own use. It won't be the second uh, dwelling unit. That's correct. If they continue to use it for the purpose of an illegal second unit, they will continue to be prosecuted both for building code violations as well as for zoning violations because they failed to meet the parking requirement. Now, if council at a later date, you know, alters the parking requirement to remove that third parking space as, as a mandatory requirement to create a second unit, then this applicant will have the opportunity to come back under the rules that would be in place should the bylaw be amended. What is the difference right now? You said uh, 18 centimeter. Uh, is that something their garage is not standard to fit into cars or how we calculate that uh, distance? Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, the garage when it was originally constructed was big enough to accommodate it. The, I'm not certain at what time, but at, at some point, the garage was then divided. A corridor was added with a door from the outside and stairs into the basement. So they've reduced the depth and the width of the parking space, whether it was this owner or previous owner, I don't know, but the, the garage inside has been altered, which is why they no longer meet either the width required for a parking space or the length. So, uh, as you heard the detailed discussions, uh, if this garage is originally according to the builder as either yourself or the original owner get, it was good for two car parking. Yes. You may still able to fit in two cars uh, yes. right now, but according to the bylaws, that length is not good enough because of the alterations uh, you or the previous owner uh, to the property. Yes. However, if uh, some of your own family member uh, willing to uh, live in the property, I don't think so, and staff, please correct me uh, if I'm wrong, I don't think so staff has any objection as long as you legalize uh, that one dwelling completely or uh, you fulfill the bylaws and the staff's criteria for the basement uh, versus if you're going to apply for the second dwelling unit, uh, that's where staff has objection uh, for those uh, reduced size of length in the garage. So the renovations were actually made by the original owners for the house. Uh, I'd like to state that for the record. Mm -hmm. um, also, the, it was my understanding that the committee was for minor variances, and I assumed that 18 centimeters would be a minor variance. Like, I'm not too sure. Like, this is actually my first time doing something like this, so... Um, maybe, like, I feel like the solution I've been offered by the staff. Like, is there, just a comment, is there any way you feel uh, that uh, you can increase our, uh, uh, the length or by laminating some sort of wall or something so where uh, the 18 centimeters can come to less? I, I'm not too sure, actually. If you're not sure, then we are not like, sure either. Um, <laughs> Mr. Power, please. Uh, so if I look in at the garage, you could get that 18 centimeters from removing the shelving unit next to the door. So if you removed all those shelving units, you would get the subsequent parking space that you needed. And from my understanding, it's just so a family member can move into, the, can be in the basement or something. It's not used for a second dwelling, is it? Y yes, uh, but to get the building permit, we'd have to like I said, make sure the variances. Like, just, uh, unfortunately, so that's how it is. Just a comment. I don't think so. Just the shelving units uh, would may impact uh, because it's still the door swing and stuff uh, comes in place. Uh, sorry. If, if I may clarify, the removal of the shelving units would assist with the, well, would assist with the depth. However, it's still not wide enough. Even if you remove those shelving units, the walls that have been created encroach into the minimum width of 2.7, takes it down to 2.4. So removing the shelving is not going to resolve the issue in its entirety. Um, and, and just to comment on, it's, it's irrelevant who lives in the basement. 
If that basement is constructed as a self-contained separate unit, it must be registered with the city. If it is capable of being used as a separate unit, it must be registered with the city. So to finish the basement as just a basement finish for personal use, staff would require the removal of one of the elements of that second unit, either the kitchen or the bathroom that's down there, to ensure that it is no longer capable of being used as a secondary suite. Yes. So, to put together the entrance to the basement through the garage is really bad idea. Like, it's my personal opinion. Uh, that's why, even at my personal capacity as a professional in my yes. business, I never encourage anyone. And I, for the safety reason, I never support that. Yes. Uh, because that is simply reducing your garage space as well, where you can store your lawnmower or you know, snow floor or some other yes. stuff. And now uh, you, like not you or the previous owner or whoever did, I guess in, uh, unless the com committee thinks differently, uh, I'll, the part of this discussion is to help out and yes. to find a solution. Yes. And uh, we are trying our best, but at the same time, I guess maybe uh, to get that uh, separate entrance through the garage was the wrong idea, whoever did that. Yes. Uh, through the backyard or if you're, uh, if uh, it's allowed the side, if you have more than enough space at the side of the property, uh, or if it's already at the grade level uh, through the side as long as you're not digging, or even if you're digging, if the bylaw allows, bylaw allows you to dig through the backyard, and which is, uh, I think, the best scenario. Maybe uh, I would suggest you need to look into those uh, those solutions. Yes. Uh, unless the committee thinks uh, differently, Mr. Power. Yeah. As I spoke to your dad, uh, yesterday, he's got some solutions and some ideas that he can go through. As it stands right now, it's mm -hmm. not viable. Mm -hmm. Right. So he was given some solutions yesterday. You'll have to change the configuration. So yes. you've already been through to get the the, uh, the drawings that you submitted today, or that were submitted for this committee. You went through an architect. Yes, that I would is correct. Suggest you go back through that architect and, and get them to redo some things, and then come back through the planning committee, and then go that way. Definitely. Okay. All right. Okay. So if no further discussion, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to. Support staff recommendation by Ms. Duffler, seconded by Mr. Power. All in favor? Thank you. Sorry, sir. Application is not supportable, but uh, please work with the staff and your architect, and I'm sure there will be some solution. Thank you. Calling application A19170, North Bramley United Church. The property is located at 363 Howden Boulevard. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. Thank you for the time this morning. Uh, my name is Jim Christian. I'm representing uh, North Bramley United Church. Uh, Pastor Jamie Holtom's in the audience as well this morning. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is a minor variance to permit a front yard setback of 3.15 meters uh, and an interior side setback of 5.54 meters for a temporary structure that we want to put on the property for a new ministry that we're launching called 24-7 Prayer. Sure. Any members, any question, comment, concern at this point? Seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Ma'am, could you please come forward with your name and address for the record? <coughs> Is this regarding North Bramley United Church? Yeah. Good morning. You are getting the main attention for this chamber. Yeah, good morning. <laughs> interesting to learn from my own personal stuff all that goes on here. Thank you for all the work you're doing. Thank um, you. I'm um, June Locke. I'm representing the board of directors of Bramley Free Methodist Church. We're adjacent to North Bramley United. Um, we received the public notice in the mail, and I'm just here to um, just get more information and to understand more than 
just a summary that was provided in the in the public notice. Mm -hmm. um, for the record, um, from our group, we are supportive of our colleagues in the work that they're doing. Mm -hmm. and we're just here to get more information. Sure. So I guess uh, when the staff will address the application, they will be stating some conditions. So you can uh, obviously, you know, understand them as well as uh, this gentleman will be understanding. They already received a copy. If you have any, uh, we don't have too many items left. If you have any question after, you're more than welcome to speak with the staff. Okay, okay thank you. Through the chair, um, if I could have the spelling of the speaker's last name and Please. the address, thank you. Uh, um, last name Roth, R-O-C-K. And my address could probably be care of Bramley Free Methodist Church, 355 Howden Boulevard. The postal code, please. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> There's through you, Mr. Chair. I can provide the postal. It's L6S 4L6. Okay, thank you. Thank you for helping, Ms. Myers. <laughs> okay, sir. Uh, anyway, so anybody else in the audience? Saying none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Through the chair, uh, we have reviewed the application and it does conform to the protest. Um, uh, specifically, I will speak um, about the location. We do understand uh, that it is an existing parking um, for the church. Um, this is a temporary use for two years and we have a condition that says that uh, the applicant shall enter into a temporary structure agreement with the city for a period of two years. So um, it, it is uh, not anticipated to have any negative effects. Uh, on the contrary, the placement in the front uh, provides eyes on the street and uh, it, it will create a welcoming um, approach to the use of this uh, proposed structure. Um, we do have conditions that cover all kinds of situations. We do want a site plan limited application so that uh, uh, all staff um, from various uh, divisions can uh, review this in detail. Also, uh, we are asking for urban design to review the proposed mural on the structure so that we do we, we can see that it fits in uh, with the intent and character. We also have a condition for signage that will be required. And uh, of course, they will need to obtain a building permit prior to the construction. So um, subject to the conditions, we do find the application supportable. Okay. Uh, normally, the staff do read conditions. Mm, I can sure. see so, it's um, uh, lengthy, but do you understand and accept these conditions? Yes. And uh, I, I guess, please, okay, yeah. go ahead, because sure. uh, we have one concern. Sure. As well. So um, um, that application A19170 supportable subject to the following conditions. Number one, that the extent of the variance is be limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice. That a limited site plan application be submitted within 30 days of the committee's decision. And the site plan shall be approved and implemented within 60 days of the committee's final decision or within an extended period of time as approved by the Director of Development Services. Um, number three, that the applicant shall enter into a temporary structure agreement with the city for a period of two years from the date of decision of the approval and shall provide applicable securities to ensure the removal of the structure after the period of two years from the date of decision of the approval. Number four, that the applicant shall obtain a building permit prior to the erection and installation of the temporary structure. Number five, that drainage on adjacent property shall not be adversely affected. Six is that all signage associated with the structure shall be in accordance with the sign bylaw and shall not be installed or displayed until such time as appropriate permits have been issued. And the last is that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Thank you. Thank you. So do you understand and accept these conditions? We do. Okay. Uh, Ms. Carzola, please. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair, if I may make just one suggested modification to condition number six. Mm -hmm. um, and as Ms. Shaw had indicated, there is obviously a building wrap that's surrounding the proposed structure, and that building wrap is considered to be a mural um, that will require council approval. So if I may just recommend that the condition be reworded to say that all signage associated with the temporary structure shall be in accordance with the sign bylaw or as otherwise approved by council and shall not be displayed. I guess that's agreed. Okay, so if no further discussion, I'm looking for a motion to support these amended conditions by the staff. 
Motion to support this man, uh, amended condition by the staff by Mr. Power, seconded by Mr. Cope. All in favor? Sir, good luck and best wishes. Thank you. Thank you to the committee and staff. Application A19125, Julius and Prio Gill. The <coughs> property is located at 24 Morton Way. Good morning, Mr. Chair, other committee members, staffs. My name is Sajeev Kumar from Central Engineering, representing Julius Gill and Prio Gill for uh, minor variance listed here at 24 Morton Way, Benton. Okay. Anything else you wish just to add besides the application? No, Anyone, uh, any question, comment, concern? Committee members saying none. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application, 24 Morton Way? Saying none. Staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Staff are supportive of this application subject to the following conditions. One, the extent of the variances be limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice. Two, the owner shall obtain a building permit within 60 days of the decision of approval. Three, the site entrances shall not be used for an unregistered second, second dwelling unit. Four, drainage on adjacent properties shall not be adversely affected. Five, the failure to comply, uh, comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Acceptable. Yeah, you were very quick. That's good. Uh, if no further discussion, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to proceed with staff's recommendation by Mr. Power, seconded by Ms. Tucker. All in favor? This is a Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you. Staff. Thank you. Sorry? Yes, 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 I got it. I thought it was. So I guess uh, even though I, tr I finish a uh, bit early, I tried my best, but I cannot call a gentleman because I can see Mr. Clark is here. Yes, sir. Welcome. Good morning, members Good morning. of the committee. Good to see you again. Um, you will see on today's agenda there was an item that's listed after a German, I believe it is, a business item for a check-in. And what I wanted to do was uh, uh, sit down, have a business meeting with the members of the committee just to do a six-month calendar check-in, just to see how things are going, uh, hear some of your comments, and provide some feedback that uh, we're seeing and experiencing in your six months. But because uh, one member is missing, and I know there is a scheduling uh, conflict with a member of the committee. Um, I'm going to request that we defer this to the October tw 22nd, I think, is your next meeting. Um, committee sure. meeting. Um, we will bring in lunch. Uh, we'll sit down and we'll have a, uh, a debrief and a check-in just to see how things are going. Uh, Mr. Clerk, uh, uh, member Mr. Uh, Pope indicated that uh, he might have some difficulty for October 22nd hearing. So he's suggesting the November meeting. Certainly, yeah. So just to be on safe side, I, uh, November, uh, when in the November we have? Mm -hmm. 12th, sorry. 12th of November. Yeah. So if it's not, uh, like we finish uh, quite uh, early. I, I know I indicated earlier I yeah. need to be at a uh, swearing ceremony and yes. it has to be on time. But we have the time, uh, we could proceed today, but as Ms. Marcus is not here, so I guess so we can refer this, refer this to November the 12th uh, hearing. Yeah. Thank you, and we're gonna be bringing in some statistics, which we have some already of um, just comparisons the last six months versus previous years and uh, some trends that we're seeing. So, sure, but, sure. But yes, also sir. to hear feedback from the members in terms of uh, um, things that you're seeing. Um, and uh, so we can work together to ensure that this is a smooth process, not only for you, but for the public and for staff. Exactly. So I don't know. That, that's a that's, okay. that's really great idea. And thank you for doing that and bringing all those stats and uh, so we can all work together in a better efficient way. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. So if no further mo uh, uh, business, uh, looking for a motion to adjourn. If no one is putting the motion, I'm going to put it. So motion to adjourn by Mr. Power, second by Mr. Cope. All in favor? This meeting is adjourned.